going to do a little video production thing here on installing the roller rocker arms. There's been a lot of questions on how to do it. It uses our AFN nut, which is a cute little adapter that we use to be able to use roller rockers on stock rocker studs. This motor is a 540 that we're putting together with a four and three quarter stroke. It has a set of iron heads that Micah ported. Never porting a set of heads before. This is a brand new practice. So at this level, it's like anybody can do this in their garage. We're looking for real world performance out of this motor with iron heads. It has our single spring with damper for the iron head to use with the 202 and the 203 cam. Other than that, this is just a set of cast iron heads that Micah cleaned up. We're putting it on a 540 cubic inch motor, which is a four and three quarter inch motor. And we're pretty much done with it. So we're gonna go ahead and put the rocker arms on. First thing we're gonna do, oil the push rods. Make sure you put them in the right places because obviously they go on both sides. Okay. Roller rocker arms. Oh, while you're doing the roller rocker arms, make sure you get the trunnion on the right side. These little nuts have to fit into the relief that goes right inside here. If you put the trunnion on backwards, which you can, it doesn't put the nut in the right place. So you need to make sure that you have this flat section in here for the nut to fit on and not the unmachined side. There's two sides, unmachined and machined. And you want the machined side up because it works with the roller rocker arms and the nuts. Okay, make sure the balls go into the sockets because they can be missed if they do the rockers go on cricket. See that one sitting kind of stupid? Okay, another thing. There will be, as the engine sits, there will be like five of these that are pretty much on the base circle and either two or three that will be on top of the cam load. With those, you don't want to tighten the ones that are on top of the cam load. It's too much load on the studs and on the little nuts. You want to put this thing together for adjustment purposes, the five that are on the base circle, and you'll do those first. Now to put this together, use a quarter inch socket, quarter inch nut rail. That's all you need. This is the little nut going down inside. Now right here on this one here, when you turn this back and forth, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm turning it back and forth. You can actually feel when this goes to zero clearance. You can turn the push rod inside here with your fingers like this. And when you get there, it stops turning. That tells you it's down to zero clearance. Now, the little piston inside the lifter hasn't compressed yet. But it's down to where it's pretty much taken out the clearance. That's where you want to start. So by going back and forth, you can actually feel where it starts. Okay, that's zero clearance. From there, I use a quarter inch ratchet, and it should be between one and one and a half turns. Okay, this one's went around one and three quarter times. So I'm going to take a little paint marker, and I mark that on each one of those. I usually loosen them up a little bit, tighten them, loosen them, and tighten them. That way you can get a feel for what this guy is doing. They're not really hard to do, but you do need to pay attention. Do another one. Now this one's on top of the cam loop. I don't know if you can see, but see how high these are here? This guy is really high, so we're going to leave him alone. We're going to go to this guy here. I'm turning the push rod right inside. Okay, right there. Right there, that's all the torque I want. Right there, it stopped turning. Okay, now I grab a little quarter inch ratchet again so we can see how far it is. Put it straight down, at least I do. And now it's, here's one turn. 
and there's one and three eighths. Okay, this one's on the base circle, so we're going to repeat them. Okay, the push line just stopped turning. Right there. Okay, so we got that straight down. There's one turn. Not quite one and a half. Maybe a little more than one and three eighths. We're going to call it one and three eighths. Now when we get done with these, we're going to set all these up level, all five of them, six of them done. Then we're going to rotate the engine 100 or 360 degrees and we'll do the other ones on this side. Okay, push right, see it's real loose there, tight there. This one's one and a quarter. See, the reason I knew this one was screwy is because we had two turns, more than two turns, and it wasn't down yet. And I hadn't noticed that it was on the base or on a cam lobe coming up. So this is going to be one of the three. There's this one, this guy here, this guy here. And this guy here are the three that we're not going to do until we rotate the engine over. See, it's loose. Got a little bit there, got none. Okay, so we're at zero right there. And the push rod's also got hard to turn. Loosened up, spins real well. Right there, hard to turn. Okay, one turn. One and a quarter. Now when we get done after we're doing this, we're going to loosen all these up, take these nuts off because we've checked to make sure the dimensions are correct, and we're going to put Loctite inside each one of these nuts, and then we're going to go back and screw them back on for the final adjustment. Because we don't want to put Loctite on these and then find out we got a problem because then you got to take it all apart again, just not the right way to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is turn the engine over. What I'm doing here is since I've already adjusted five out of eight of these, rock arms and I know the dimensions are right. I turned the crank 360 degrees down here and just because I'm waiting on some other things to happen I'm torquing. I took this nut off, put Loctite in it, I took this nut off, put Loctite in it and I'm using a 120 inch pound torque wrench. So that's all this thing is, is right there. Okay. And I'm marking what I'm done because if I don't I go stupid and forget. Okay, now this one, this one, and this one were the three that were on top of the cam load. So we've got those left to do. Start with this one. And I expect that they're all going to turn out to be about 1.25, that one and a quarter turn, because they're really consistent all the way down the side here. See, there's that one right there. See, here it's really free. See, it's been. And air stops. Okay. So, I'm guessing this one would be a turn and a quarter, too. Okay. One turn. Oh, interesting enough, 
This one was a little less than one turn. So I think I'm going to take it apart and take a look at it and see what's goofy on this one. It may be that just the dimension on the trunnion or the rockers is that way. And I'm okay with the one turn. That doesn't bother me. But I just want to make sure that everything is good. I have the, the nut down inside the little socket, down inside the trunnion, so it's right. And the nut's turning free. And this is turning free. Okay, there's that. Okay, right about there. Okay, there's one turn. And it's not quite a turn and a quarter. But it looks like this lifter had a little more air in it. So the actual feel for compressing the push rod was different than the ones that had the oil in it. This one had some air in the lifter. So I've got an inch or one an inch and a one and an eighth turn. Got it. One and an eighth. Which is a little shorter than these guys. But this isn't a quarter and this is inch and three eighths. So I'm pretty much okay with this too. Okay, so we're gonna go to this one here. So we're going to go one turn. There's one and a quarter, one and three eighths. Then we got the last one here. Now this adjustment on these rock arms can also vary if whoever does the valve job on your heads makes the stems of the valves a little bit lower or higher and changes that relationship, this pivot point is going to change this number here. Now it'll still be okay as long as they're all even. The camshaft is probably not going to change, the lifters are pretty much all common. But anything that's going to change the length of this, the dimension of this, or the height of this, is going to make this adjustment here change. We've had some of them where somebody will do some cylinder head work, or they'll deck the blocks, or they'll do something different, and it takes like two and a half to three turns. Well, then we have to go inside and shim up the studs, because two and a half to three turns pushes this piston too far down out of its operating range. You're only supposed to have it no more than... Uh, I think two turns is 40 thousandths, about 80 thousandths or 100 thousandths, let's say, down in the bore. And if you turn it two or three turns, you've moved it way past the operating range where it's supposed to be. So to fix that, you go down underneath here and you shim up the stud. We had one customer that it was the other way around, that when he tightened these up, it held the valves off the seats. So what he had to do is, I think he ended up with 60,000 shims underneath the studs to make the adjustment right. There's one turn, there's a quarter, there's one three eighths. Okay, all these here came out really good. There's a little bit of variation, but they're well within a range. So we don't have a problem here. So what I'm going to do now is the ones that are on the base circle, I'm going to pull these guys off, put Loctite in them, and then torque them down with my little torque wrench. And then I'm going to rotate the engine again so that the ones that are on top of the cam lobe go to the base circle. Then I'm going to take those nuts off, there's three of them, and I'm going to Loctite these, and then we'll be done with this side. And then that side there is just a repeat of this side. Here, I've taken all these nuts off. After I did the initial adjustment, everything was adjusted, everything came out fine. I pulled each one of these nuts off one at a time, put a Loctite on the first three threads inside, and then as I screw the nut back down the stud and retighten it with the quarter inch nut driver, it'll take that Loctite and work it all the way down the threads. What I'm doing now is just going across using my torque wrench and tightening each one of these. 
making sure that it's where it's supposed to be. See this one's a little bit loose. There, click in. There's another loose one. Now loose is probably one or two foot pounds. I mean they're they're pretty close. Most of the time I just do this by hand and go over it and just double check it with the torque. 